Let's go. This is uh, Sham Sabhada. We are here to present the integrated agent-based model for broadband resource allocation analysis. Um, uh, we have an interdisciplinary team and I'm here to introduce um, all of them. So let's start with Jennifer. Hello. Uh, Casey. Hello. Kuldeep. Hey. Uh, and uh, Viglinski. Hello. Uh, with that, I give it to uh, Jennifer to, uh, or Casey to set up the problem. So internet access and the digital divide is a significant challenge for everyday life as well as emergency scenarios, as demonstrated by our current circumstances in the context of COVID-19. Broadband access is directly related to the ability to access healthcare and education, as well as to conduct business and work remotely. So as you can see in this map, there are large parts of the US with inadequate access to broadband internet. In fact, over 26% of Americans in rural areas and 32% of Americans in tribal lands lack coverage from fixed terrestrial connections, compared to only 1.7% of Americans in urban areas. While there's hope that 5G cellular technology will help address this gap, there are significant infrastructure deployment challenges in rural areas where low population density and poor return on investment disincentivize market-based approaches. As a result, public funding is being used to fill this gap and cost effectiveness is a major concern. So in this paper, we describe a strategy to combine network simulation tools and policy analysis tools to more thoroughly analyze potential solutions. The value of this approach is in its ability to accurately model both the technical aspects of the system as well as the more human behavioral aspects to test potential solutions in a simulated environment. And so we've visualized uh, the methodology here. And basically what happens is um, we use uh, agent-based modeling software, in this case NetLogo, uh, to generate a scenario um, then uh, we take that scenario and we input it to a wireless network simulator, in this case, NS3. And that's how we model the throughput and handovers. Uh, and then that information is sent back to the agent-based modeler uh, and we simulate the economic impact of the, both the users have and the base stations. The next slide. So, um, in order to make this simulation happen, we're leveraging two existing tools. So the first is agent-based modeling using NetLogo, which is a very popular agent-based modeling platform. This is a bottom-up simulation approach that involves assigning rules for how agents, or in this case, people, interact with each other and the environment. This is particularly useful for modeling social networks and market behavior. So even very simple models can provide insight because this type of modeling approach is used to discover emergent behavior in chaotic systems. So in other studies uh, related to similar contexts, there's evidence that behavioral factors such as customer service and perceived quality of service are more predictive of system outcomes. However, these models did not accurately model the wireless layer. And so our approach leverages a second simulator, NS3, to create this layer. So NS3 is a commonly used and validated tool that models packet data networks for cellular architectures such as 5G. So there are opportunities to expand on this approach by integrating physical and link layers. For example, it's possible to integrate GIS terrain data into NetLogo. And so now I'm gonna hand it over to Jennifer and Kuldeep to get into the details. Cool. So this implementation approach utilizes the benefits of both tools because we can accurately model the behavioral part of the system with NetLogo and the wireless network with NS3. More specifically, ABM is able to handle diverse heterogeneous agents and reduce the simplification of human behavior. And uh, now Kuldeep will speak a little bit on NS3. So, so NS3 is a discrete event network simulator, uh, which can accurately model network layer parameters. So for this work, uh, we have used a LTE module. So in LTE module, we can uh, enable MME, SGW, PGW. We can have the whole network architecture working together to get more realistic uh, simulation results. 
So in this work, we have tried a very realistic channel model to get the different parameters. So I'll hand it over to Casey for next slide. Um, to give you a sense of how this works, um, I'm going to walk you through the simulation and then we'll show some preliminary results. So in block one, first net logo generates a scenario with base stations and users. Then each user is randomly assigned broadband usage requirements. For example, some people just need the internet to check email while others are trying to run an online business. Cool people will talk about the third through fifth step. So currently we don't have a functionality available to create an interface between NetLogo and NS3. If we had that, we could have done a very uh, smooth uh, data interactions where net, uh, data generated by NetLogo net can be directly passed to NS3 for further work. But uh, so in this, in this work, uh, we are first uh, generating the data from NetLogo in a form of CSV file. That CSV file is imported in NS3 passed and we calculate the locations of user this way. So we have base station locations which are computed using Poisson point process. And then users are given certain velocity as they are moving with a uniform random distribution. So in block four, we calculate handovers. So for handovers in NST, there are two, uh, two methods available. One is S1AP, the other one is X2. In this one, we have used X2 as X2 provides a lower latency for uh, doing the handover. Uh, so in block five, so all the gen data generated by NSC, like the throughput, latency, IMSI numbers for all the uh, users, it's dumped into a text file. Then we use that text file to generate results and do uh, further analysis. Uh, so block six uh, describes the same thing where we are uh, calculating the throughput using the uh, number of uh, Rx bytes received and then it's used by NetLogo to calculate the uh, base station economic impacts. And, and now Professor Casey will take the next one. Um, so this is Jennifer. Uh, this is an example of a random scenario generated by NetLogo. The blue circles represent base stations and the red dots represent users. To keep the model simple, we won't assume anything about the home or work location. This scenario is then input into NS3 to initialize the simulation. Next slide. This slide is showing the impact of the base station locations and it helps us visualize what occurs in block six. Economic impacts are calculated by summing the data that all users of the base station access over the course of the simulation. Since throughput is related to the distance between the user and the base station, base stations that are further from users on average will have lower economic impacts. Next slide. Figure five is a plot showing the share of the positive economic impact of each base station over the course of the simulation. Base stations are identified as one through 10. Users are identified one of 125 unique IDs in this scenario as shown in figure three. After economic impact shares are scaled to dollar amounts, these can be compared to the cost of each base station. In some cases, a base station can have comparatively smaller economic effects, but can serve a larger number of agents. This can occur when a base station is further on average from agents than other base stations, but serves more base stations agents on average. Cool Deep will talk about the mean throughput results on the next slide. So uh, once, we ha once we collected the measurements, we have plotted this uh, mean throughput. So mean throughput is there are 125 UEs. Each, is, each UE is moving with different velocity, so they will have different impact. Uh, since we are using Okumura Hata channel model, each will be uh, using different SNR. So, all 125 UEs have different throughput rates. So together, uh, and we have ran the simulation for 50 seconds. So to get the mean throughput rate for that entire duration, we computed uh, this plot. So this shows the mean throughput rate for 125 UEs with different velocities at for that whole interval. Uh, for next slide, Professor Casey. 
Hi, this is Alex. So, so uh, overall, um, this recent result paper shows some very exciting initial results uh, where it actually um, describes the intersection between several different communities with respect to this very important problem of supporting rural broadband connectivity. It's not only a technological problem, it's not only a policy or economic problem, it's a problem that spans uh, multiple layers. Uh, so devising software tools that are able to analyze this and provide reliable information such that uh, both technologists and policymakers, government organizations, companies, uh, even communities, uh, the correct decisions on how broadband connectivity should be deployed uh, and how it should provide services to the, uh, you know, to the region is quite critical. Using things like NetLogo, um, like a software package that is very reliable in describing the behavior of individuals within a community, within a region, uh, their, their, um, their needs, um, how their usage behaviors and all that, and then combining it with a very accurate communications and networking simulation, uh, simulator such as NS3 and, and uh, creating some sort of bridge between the two uh, and, and a feedback loop uh, describing how one affects the other is quite important in understanding this very complex problem. So this work really does lay the groundwork for a lot of future uh, investigation into analyzing rural broadband from these multiple different layers. Um, of course, uh, the recent results do not uh, model the, sorry, the addition of, of infrastructure with respect to more base stations, uh, because this is actually another element of, uh, with respect to the rollout of, of um, you know, required funding in order to set up these base stations across zones that can really, really benefit from additional coverage. But uh, this tool, Okay, when it's uh, more fully uh, developed and such, can actually create hy hypothetical situations where you can position uh, virtual base stations in, in an area that you've already kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, modeled in terms of the sort of the existing infrastructure plus the existing communities and say, what would be the maximum impact? Where can you position these new base stations, this more bang for your buck in terms of positioning this new infrastructure in order to maximize coverage and really close that uh, digital divide, this rural broadband digital divide. So this proposed approach is very useful in terms of modeling those policies, modeling the deployment of this technology, um, and, and really be a useful tool for multiple communities. And thank you again for uh, watching our presentation reading our paper, and we look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Uh, definitely feel free to reach us, uh, reach us via cyberspace. Thank you.